Hello, hello. How are you? My name is Lisa Loring, and I'm here to do a reading for Friday, July 16th. I've been doing a novena for um, Our Lady of Mount Carmel, and um, it, her feast day is actually tomorrow, because I've discovered um, I was raised Roman Catholic, so um, I went through all the sacraments, and um, as part of my growing up, you know, part of that is you go through confirmation, which is where, where you confirm your belief in the faith. I went through that at a pretty young age. I was only in fifth grade, but I was in Catholic school at the time. So I think if you are actively exposed to a particular that faith, you do it at a, a very young age. But I did take it really seriously, and I researched saints, and I settled on Saint Therese, the little flower, and she's the saint of basically the little ways of doing the little things every day to make your life great. And um, you know, I think I didn't quite. I don't. In fact, I know I didn't understand that completely until now in my life, but I'm really glad that she's been my patron saint. And miraculously, as we'll go there, um, her, the basilica for her is right here in San Antonio, although I live in Austin, and San Antonio is about an hour south of here. Um, I happened upon her basilica. So anyway, I've been following, um, and they did, you know, a novena, which is basically a meditation on the works of the, the, Our Lady of Carmel, the, our mother, and really celebrating the Virgin Mary and, and the simplicity of her life and how she had it just as hard as anybody, you know, now, if not worse. I mean, considering if you know any of her history, what she had to go through, and she basically had to share her son with the entire world in order to bring our humanity to a particular level of consciousness, you know, 2,000 plus years ago. And that was a great gift to the world. But to have that kind of selflessness as a mother and recognize that, you know, your son is for everybody, he's not just your son, is um, a big deal. And I think we need to, that's a really good message for all of us because, you know, the people in our lives are not just for us. They are for everybody. They have, you know, we share them, we share them with everybody and everybody has their own path to follow and everybody has their own journey and their own purpose and to put controls around that because of what we believe that we need is asking someone to sacrifice themselves to a very large degree. So we talked about this a little bit in yesterday's reading, which was about codependency and interdependency and what that difference is. So that happens to be going on in the background. Um, so I'm here to do the reading for, so go back and look at that reading for yesterday and see what that, you know, see if that resonates for you at all. And um, so basically, I'm here to do the reading for Friday, July 16th, which is the feast day of our, our mother, our virgin, our lady of Carmel. And the, um, on which, you know, the Carmelite order of nuns is founded. And, you know, and I selected, I, as I was getting ready to do the reading, I was like, which deck do I want to use? And the Archangel deck by Doreen Virtue and Rodley Valentine. Doreen Virtue is the author and Rodley Valentine did the artwork for this. Doreen Virtue, I will always mention when I use her cards, has actually actively asked us to not use her cards, but her, I still continue, and I, I understand and respect that honor, but these are sep this work is separate. As I said, you know what, this work was produced at a time in her life, and um, it provides a lot of, it, this is a beautiful deck. It's probably the first tarot deck I ever felt comfortable working with. And, um, you know, in truth, uh, you know, like I said, we all have gifts that we add to this life as we move along. This is one of her gifts. And to turn our back on those gifts, I think actually does a part of us a disservice. So um, I respect your Doreen's wishes, but I also continue to celebrate her good work because these are, you know, tarot is not witchcraft. It's not, it's a meditation on, and in this case, you know, archangels who are with us all the time. And archangels are non-denominational. 
even though I did share with you that I was raised Roman Catholic and there are aspects of that faith which I continue to practice. I practice lots of different spiritual you know, things to cultivate my spirituality, to cultivate my connection with spirit. And that comes through a variety of ways, a variety of means. It comes through the voices of my neighbors. It comes through my cats. It comes through the plants around me. Anything that sparks your spirit, helps you be more connected to your own divinity and thus, therefore, the larger, greater divine source from which we all come is good. So, um, yeah, tarot is one of those ways to meditate and to receive messages, to connect us to source and to work with the energies in the best way possible, and to enjoy ourselves and to, you know, look at both the dark aspects and figure out how to turn them into light, to shed light on them. So we asked the archangels, all of my guides, all of everybody's guides to give me a message for the, for the collective consciousness to share for Friday, July 16th, 2021. What are the blessed messages? I reach into my heart and deeply and ask for any of my energies to be moved aside so I can read. Uh huh. The feeling that was coming out. Seven of Water. This card came out in a, cu a couple of days ago. The Seven of um, Cups card is basically what this is. And this came out at the bottom of the deck two or three nights ago, two or three readings ago, for I think for the Tuesday reading. So complex decision, the need to do research, stop procrastinating. Um, it's seven energy is um, one of spirit, high spirituality. It's of karma. It's of looking at the divinity within ourselves of, um, in the seven of cups, it's, you know, can sometimes be this very dreamy energy building castles in the sky. We'll see what else comes out with it because the other cards that come out will also provide more insight. Um, stop procrastinating. Um, yeah, so um, some I said something, I think the, um, the answers were coming clear. I think that was part of what was coming out yesterday. Three of Earth. So the Three of Pentacles is back again. This is that, the, the Earth um, in this deck is related to the Pentacles in the traditional tarot. Can read that power of creativity recognition for very high quality work be a team player so again working collaboratively came up strongly you saw the, the three working in the um deviant moon tarot deck the other night that was a central part of the reading oh, i can't remember where it occurred feel free to go back and look at that um let's see what else do we have for friday july 16th Hopes, wishes, and dreams are a very strong feature of the Seven of Water. Making decisions, we're considering things carefully, looking at all of our options. But we can sit there and look so long that, you know, it creates that, that stagnancy, that procrastination kind of sens sensation. So, you know, um, I think it's actually okay to be in that space. Um, but, you know, with the Three of Earth coming in, it does mention get to work and, you know, work with others in order to start a project going. We've been doing a lot of groundwork for projects and um, with Venus and Mars conjoining and they are still um, in within orb of one another to continue to fertilize and some seed of a project of any sort that we're working on, some kind of aspiration, some kind of dream that we're looking to come to fruition to continue to cultivate that. The, thir the Earth card coming up suggests cultivation, and here's our, so here we are. The Knight of Earth has come up again, so the Knight of Pentacles is back. He was also um, earlier on in the week. We have that Knight of Pentacles um, following the king of a, a very decisive king, with the, well, probably the most decisive king in the deck, the King of Swords. And that Knight of Pentacles was taking that decision and bringing it to earth in order to start to create that. So we've got the three cards out. Let's um, angle the camera down. I will turn the cards around so everybody can um, take a look at that. Take a look at them. And at the bottom of the deck, we have 
Ah, nine of water. Your wish comes true. Concerns fade away. A love of life. The eight of fire. So this is um, fast moving, um, moving events moving at a fast pace. Delays are over. Many things happening at once. So yeah, we're gonna, we are definitely gonna start moving and grooving here. Eight of water. Um, a desire to move on. The search for something more meaningful. A spiritual and emotional growth. And the knight of water. So, you know, something is coming in. Ace of water. Um, falling in love with the resurgence of a relationship, spiritual growth, and enhanced intuition in new home. So we have a lot of um, interesting energy coming in as well. So again, seven of water is a, is, is, is making, um, you know, really looking, sifting through our emotions, sifting through our spirit, really asking spirit in order to help us come to a decision. But that stop, procrastin stop procrastinating is, um, yeah, we're going to the, the you know, we I would say take that time, you know, work in prayer and meditation especially at the beginning of the day tomorrow um in order to ground oneself and these two ground very ground earth energy cards are following this water card. So in order to kind of sift through the myriad of emotions that we might be experiencing on the front end of the day, that's what I'm getting is we want to definitely take the moment in the morning to get outside to exercise, maybe get up get up earlier than you normally would, even 15 minutes to just center yourself and ground and meditate and just be and breathe within the heart. Set a timer for 15 minutes. That's all you need to do. And then move into um, the day. Um, it, then you'll feel like you can move into the day in a more productive manner in a way that um, helps you work well with others in order to create something to, to use, to, to utilize your tools, your emotional, your mental, and your physical tools at a more skillful, higher level to create something of great beauty out of your day. And out of the, you know, whatever project that we've been seeding and cultivating and, um, you know, fertilizing, essentially. And so, um, you know, this butterfly, you, you have a transform, you know, this butterfly is, is attracting my eye. Um, it's like a butterfly moth. It almost seems as though they, this little um, fairy-like being is putting the final touches on this, moths, this butterfly's wings in order to help it to fly. I've, I've never quite noticed that in this card before, but I'm noticing it tonight. And I notice also the mountains. Oftentimes there is a mountain fe range featured in a three of pentacles, three, and in this deck it's a three of earth card. And that means that, you know, it's giving you, you, giving you the tools that you need in order to ascend the, you know, in, in, to, to order to, to undertake the journey and to ascend the mountain, what might, might seem like an arduous task is not so arduous with the help of all of these beings. You're moving from, you know, yes, you're moving away from a lush garden to what seems some very lofty kinds of ambitions, but you have the tools to do this. And if we work collaboratively with spirit, if we, you know, pull in those meditation, um, the, the, the time to meditate, we connect with spirit, we connect with our divinity. We, I talked about that a lot um, earlier is um, if we take the time to connect there, we're going to be able to, you know, surmount whatever rises up in front of us as we move through the course of the day. This isn't something that's going to be, you know, done in, you know, it's it, the night is picking this up. This is the slowest moving night in the deck if we talk down, talked about time to buckle down and get things done. So this isn't going to honor your commitments. Um, talk to guardian angels. So speaking to your guardian angels, Again, coming back to that spirituality, recruiting your spiritual team, whatever that might be for you, is definitely, again, I see another, the mountain range is, what, is what's going to get us on the other side of these mountains. So we're taking off, we're lifting off, and we're going to get on the other side of the mountain range. But, you know, so it might seem like what we, you know, we're going to surmount a pretty, what feels like maybe a pretty big deal, but um, we're getting on the other side of that. You're going to get there anyway, and you'll find a horse to ride on, and you're going to start your journey. And it's going to take a minute, but, you know, you're starting on a journey. And, and events may seem very, very different on the other side. And we've got this aid of fire here to support that. So all of a sudden it may feel like you're in a completely different land. And I, and I noticed like, you know, so from we were moving from a very lush garden to, you know, kind of these spires and they look like, you know, things of like Moscow or, you know, the Middle East or something like that. Things that are maybe foreign, a foreign land to you that may be very different environment than what you, um, where you came from. But the nine of water is here, so your wishes come true. So you know, it, leaving leaving aside any kinds of concerns 
um, letting definitely working, you know, knowing that we, you know, we have abundance and, and, and whatever we need is going to come rising up to meet us. That's very, very obvious. And even if, you know, if, if you feel like you're, yep, you're taking an aid of water and, you know, you're, you feel like you've moved on you and you're working, you're really tapping into spiritual, um, you know, so, and, and a place where you're, where spiritual growth is going to, number one, be your priority and what will foster your spiritual growth. Coming back to this kind of card is, is you know, I feel like time of moving on, but then you've got the night of water coming in. So, you know, it, falling in love, a wedding proposal, the need to balance emotions, you know, keep, keep your emotions in check. Know that, you know, your spiritual, you know, any place that you're trying to strive to, to move toward, that's going to be the be the most ideal place to, for where you can be yourself, where you can hear spirit. Constantly checking in will help you keep your, you know, keep your emotions in check and keep you from kind of riding off um, on a, a pretty wild looking dolphin there. It's getting so, you know, like dolphins are definitely playful, but this guy is kind of like a bucking, you know, a bucking uh, dolphin, so to speak. The night of of um, the Knight of Cups and or the Knight of Water in this particular um, deck is, you know, the least reliable knight in terms of he'll come in very, you know, rushing with lots of, um, you know, emotions and all the poetry and all of, you know, that kind of thing and, you know, feel like a real soulmate kind of situation. But, um, you know, con you know, coming back to being an empress, we've got the Archangel Gabriel here coming in, being the empress, receiving message, being nur nurturing. This empress came up in the reverse earlier in the week. Now it's in an upright position. And um, giving birth to your dreams, nurturing yourself, and nurturing of yourself is very much part of an ace of water. Continuing to come back to, you know, your own divine source. So yes, of course, we're definitely wanting to, you know, this is falling in love or the resurgence of a relationship and spiritual growth. So I can't impress upon us um you know, enough that continuing to come back to our own divine source, starting every day off by connecting back into source is the most important and the best way to get us from, you know, get it to, to, to help us be productive, even if things are kind of slow moving or even seem to all of a sudden be, you know, sort of racing ahead of us, you know, between those two polarities, getting in touch with our own divinity is the more important thing. Coming back to our own spiritual basis, checking in with our own heart, checking in with our own spirit. Does this resonate with us? So, um, you know, I have the Archangel Michael deck, which is also a, um, I, I pulled, I'm going to go ahead and pull from this one, um, as, as opposed to the Lenormand. Um, so Archangel Michael is another Dorian Virtue deck. I just want to, you know, bring that out. And I felt just really compelled to work with, um, we, you know, to keep us on our purpose, to keep us on our path. You know, being in divine purpose is one of Archangel Michael's tasks. And um, he, what, one of the things he's really, really good at and, and protecting us and to keeping us, you know, letting us know that we're protected so we continue to stay on path, even if it feels like we're being, you know, uh, frightened into stepping off or anything like that, asking him for protection, asking him to hold hands with us and to, um, you know, to wield the sword, to cut the cords away from us that, you know, the cords to anxiety, the cords of fear, to cords that, you know, of old messages and old tapes in our head, that would actually be the Archangel Gabriel's help because, you know, being asking the heart, Archangel Gabriel is also the Archangel of the heart. Um, oh, here, here's the message from Archangel Michael. So innocence, yeah. Dear God and angels, thank you for helping me see that all of your qualities of pure love and light are reflected within me and all others. Help me embrace my God-given innocence so that I may be at peace. So this is uh, this is basically staying in your own land. This is the message that's been coming across. Con continue to tap into our own divinity. And... Um, and watch your your children are watched over by angels to not worry about what's going on with other people to continue to come back to our own sense of self no matter what's going on around us to collaborate with others but ultimately knowing that of course our journey is our own and so is the journey of others and so um, that innocence here so I'll read from the book um, to give us a little more context on that Archangel Michael is holding you in a comforting embrace, assuring you of your innocence. Ask him to help you forgive yourself and let go of guilt, which is a heavy emotion that keeps you from experiencing inner peace by saying, Archangel Michael, thank you for helping me forgive myself for, you can name a specific event or, you know, whatever you have, and for anything else I've blamed myself for. 
Please help me release all self-blame from my mind, body, and emotions. Feel the sensations of deep release as Archangel Michael helps you embrace your true innocence. Your past behavior could never undo God's perfect handiwork in creating you as powerful, loving, and much-needed being of light and love. Other possible specific meanings. The individual you're inquiring about is innocent. Purify or detoxify. You can trust the situation that you're asking about. Focus on other people's good qualities instead of their mistakes, quote unquote. And then that prayer again. Dear God and the angels, thank you for helping me see that all of your qualities of pure love and light are reflected within me and all others. Help me embrace my God-given innocence so I may be at peace. So again, this is recognizing the sovereignty, and that Empress card came up, the sovereignty of other people, and by recognizing that they are on their own path, and you are free to do your path in, you know, in, in when you're touching in with your own spirit, you know, you're, you're more than welcome to live your own life in peace and beauty and um, alongside everybody else and, and make, make a life of peace and, and make your journey, right? So again, um, the archangels are there for us and all, you know, beings are. We just have to ask them to come in. They will not come in without your request. So ask for that whole hand. Ask to hold hands with them and collaborate with them. Collaborate with spirit. That was all in this reading tonight. So collaborate with your own spirit. Check in with your heart. Check in with your feelings. And, and, and take care of yourself before we take care of others. All right? So that's the reading for Friday, July 16th. If you have any um, questions, comments, anything, you can either uh, put them in the comments. You can directly email me at lisa.loring, L-I-S-A dot L-O-R-I-N-G at gmail.com. Um, like, share, subscribe on any of the three formats. I'm on Instagram, YouTube, and um Facebook. So um, share with anybody, you know, with, with the most comfortable format with anybody who you would like to share this message with. That's a great way of supporting what I do and getting the word out there. Um, and also pen, pen, PayPal and Venmo. I appreciate your donations for those of you who do send me donations through those avenues as well. Many blessings. Have a great day.